Hey, what is up, guys, and welcome back to Football Discussions, and today we are coming at you with a brand new mock draft. Sorry I haven't been making content all that consistently. Uh, hope to bring you guys a mock draft from now on every week or every other week, as well as some other content. Uh, I'm posting a interview with uh, former Bleacher Report employee Matt Miller, who's one of the most respected names in the draft community tomorrow. So stay tuned for that. That should be a lot of fun. Um, but other than that, again, just mock drafts coming your way much more frequently. Um, but yeah, let's get started. This is a mock draft with trade. So keep that in mind. And let's go to the number one overall pick, which belongs to the Jacksonville Jaguars. And they are, of course, are taking the number one prospect, uh, Trevor Lawrence, quarterback out of Clemson. People have viewed him as the highest rated quarterback since Andrew Luck. I feel like there's no way around the Jacksonville Jaguars taking Trevor Lawrence. He's a terrific talent. Uh, you know, that prototypical quarterback that you want in the NFL. Uh, Urban Meyer is now in charge of the roster as of right now until they hire a new GM. But I think he's going to have a lot of input in the roster either way. For anyone saying fields here, uh, that's just not right. Uh, it, it just won't happen. It's going to be Trevor Lawrence, the quarterback out of Clemson. Urban Meyer knows what to do when it comes to this. I think he knows that Trevor Lawrence is the the best prospect in this class, so I'd be shocked if the Jacksonville Jaguars go in any other direction. With the second overall pick, we have our first trade here, and it's the 49ers trading up to the two spot, uh, and they're trading the Jets, their 12th overall pick, the 44th overall pick, a future first, a future second, and a future fourth for the second overall pick. Uh, it's a haul, but I think with the current roster they have and with Shanahan, they can be a Super Bowl contender if they just get a better quarterback. I think they're one quarterback away. Jimmy Garoppolo is mediocre. I think that Nick Mullins was just as good as Jimmy Garoppolo would have been. Uh, uh, in Shanahan's offense, and I think that Zach Wilson would make this offense so much more electric. You already have two very, very young, very, very good receivers in Brandon Ayuk and Debo Samuel, as well as the best or second best tight end in football in George Kittle. So I think that uh, the 49ers getting Zach Wilson is the best case scenario for them. Again, giving up a lot of value, and the Jets are getting a lot of value back, and they're really in a rebuild, so they need as many picks as possible. So not only now do they have two first rounds this year, they have two first rounds next year. Just makes the most sense. I think the 49ers get their quarterback of the future and get right back into Super Bowl contention with this move. At three, we have another trade, and it's the Detroit Lions trading up uh, with the Miami Dolphins, and they're going to give up uh, their first rounder this year, their second rounder this year, as well as a future two to Miami, and they're going to get Justin Fields, the quarterback out of Ohio State. Right now, I have Zach Wilson ahead of uh, Justin Fields. I think he's just the overall better prospect. He makes uh, you know pro-level throws, is more accurate on the run, can change up his arm angle, much like Patrick Mahomes can, can make cross-body throws. I think he's a more complete quarterback than Justin Fields is. Justin Fields has that athlete, uh, uh, elite athleticism, and possesses some good quarterback traits as well. However, at Ohio State in that offense, it's set up to be so easy for the quarterback. It's a one-read offense. He really never takes his eyes off the first read. So those are the concerns I have for Justin Fields. I'm not saying he's a bad prospect. I think he's much better than Dwayne Haskins, and it's very hard to compare to compare them anyway, because they both are so different. But I think that Justin Fields at three is uh, the perfect spot for him. Zach Wilson is better. That's uh, my opinion. I think that's most people uh, who are making mock drafts right now and uh, who are in the position of GM's opinions. So I, I definitely expect Zach Wilson to be taken higher than Justin Fields when it's all said and done. But Justin Fields is a great prospect and Matthew Stafford is probably on his way out of Detroit. So it makes sense for them to go Fields here at three. At four, Falcons get Penny Sewell with the top three quarterbacks off the board. They're not going to go quarterback. I've said in my past videos, new uh, GM and new coach means quarterback. And for the most part, that's true. And that's why I have the uh, uh, Lions trading up and getting their quarterback. However, uh, I think the Falcons, like I said, all three quarterbacks are off the board. Why not get the best offensive tackle prospect in this class and Penny Sewell, the offensive tackle out of Oregon, generational talent at that tackle position. Uh, just a complete guy, high floor, high ceiling as well. I think he'll slide right into Atlanta's offense and their new GM who was formerly with that Saints regime. Uh, that Saints regime drafted five or, I think, out of the past five drafts, they drafted an offensive lineman uh, in the first or second round. So uh, they definitely, uh, the, the, their new GM is definitely going to, you know, look to build the team up from the trenches during this rebuild for Atlanta. And I think Penny Sewell is just too good of a talent to pass up on. At five, I have Rashawn Slater, the offensive tackle out of Northwestern. His name has been thrown around that he could be better than Penny Sewell in a few people's opinions. Uh, according to Daniel Jeremiah, according to Matt Miller, uh, they're saying that you know Rashawn Slater could actually be picked and is viewed by some uh, NFL teams as the best offensive tackle prospect in this class, which I know is crazy because forever it's been Sewell at that number one tackle spot. So it's going to be really interesting to see what happens on draft night. But with him being so rated so high in some teams' opinions, I know on Matt Miller's big board, 
Pittsburgh. He's number four overall. Uh, I think that is a perfect p- pick for the Bengals. Uh, due to the fact that they need to protect Joe Burrow. That should be their main focus in free agency. That should be their main focus in draft. The fact in, in the draft, the fact that you almost got Joe Burrow hurt or, or ended his career last year is an embarrassment and it should not happen with a franchise quarterback. So since he needs to go tackle here and they get Rashawn Slater at Northwestern. At six, Eagles could go wide receiver, but the best defensive player in the draft is still available in Micah Parsons, so they're going to go linebacker. Micah Parsons out of Penn State. Shane, the combine isn't happening this year. It's going to affect some opt-outs uh, like Gregory Rousseau um, uh, and, and some other guys as well. But for the guys like uh, Caleb Farley, the guys like Micah Parsons that have already solidified themselves as top 10, top 12 picks in this draft, I really Jamar Chase is another one like that. I really don't think it's going to affect their stock, the combine not happening. There will be pro days and whatnot. So I think Micah Parsons, still the best defensive player in this class. Eagles need help all over that defense. Uh, And again, it's just the best defensive player available, best player available in my opinion. So they nab Micah Parsons there. At seven, I think Jamar Chase might end up being the best prospect uh, at wide receiver. But if the Dolphins don't trade for Deshaun, because that's a long shot, and if they have two at quarterback next year, Devontae Smith makes the most sense. Just announced he's going to the Senior Bowl. He will be with Brian Flores down there. They will be working together a lot. So I think uh, the fit is already starting to gel together. You saw that with Zach Taylor. Um, Actually, no, because just Joe Burrow didn't go to the Sierra Bowl last year, so scratch that. But regardless, I think that Devontae Smith makes sense for the Dolphins. He's played with Tua. They already have a nice rapport there. And again, he will be with Brian Flores at that Senior Bowl. So really excited to see what he does there uh, and if he can you know, separate himself even more from Jamar Chase and Jalen Waddell at the Senior Bowl. Dolphins get a stud at 7. At 8, we have another trade. It's the Washington football team trading up. Uh, to the A spot, they're going to give up their first rounder and their two third rounders this year, as well as a future second rounder to Carolina. I think they need a quarterback. Matt Stafford is certainly an option this offseason. They could bring in Darnold, maybe. Uh, it's just going to be interesting to see how this quarterback carousel works. Matt Ryan might be on the move. Jimmy Garoppolo is another name that could be on the move. But if they don't have a quarterback come draft day, I think that they got to trade up and get Trey Lance. He's a terrific talent. And, you know, all the pro comps when you talk about Trey Lance, I mean, people say he's so similar to Cam Newton, has an even better arm than Cam Newton. But the way he runs, right, he's a physical runner. He's not going to be a Lamar Jackson. He's not going to douse you with jukes. He'll power run. He'll run people over. I think Trey Lance is very, very similar to Cam Newton. And guess who was Cam Newton's coach the day he won MVP? Ron Rivera, right? So Ron Rivera knows how to use quarterbacks like this. I think it makes sense for them to go Trey Lance and uh, the football team gets a stud here and their quarterback of the future, hopefully at eight overall. At nine, Denver could go any player on defense. I think Von Miller is going to be on his way out. I think they need another linebacker alongside Alexander Johnson. And of course, the secondary has got to be a main concern of them as well. With the top four quarterbacks off the board, I don't see them going any quarterback. And really, if uh, the top three are off the board, I don't think the Broncos will go quarterback. So they're going to take the best uh, corner in this class and the best defensive player remaining in this class. And it's Patrick Sertan Jr. out of Alabama. Uh, Just a beast, right? Sertan uh, has great ball skills, can really run with anyone and you know created an island for himself at Alabama he was hardly thrown at because he's that good I think Sertan is a terrific talent Denver needs cornerback help and they really need a boundary guy uh due to the fact that Callahan's more of a slot guy Bouye is not the best boundary guy and OJ Moody is definitely more of a nickel type so uh, I think Sertan is you know well within uh the need range of Denver as well as the best defensive player remaining so they're going to get him here at nine at 10, the next best corner in the class. And really after Sertan and Caleb Farley, there's a pretty big drop in this corner class. So it's going to be interesting to see where uh, the rest of these guys go. But for right now, I think that Caleb Farley makes the... Uh, the most sense here for Dallas. And again, uh, he's right up there with Sertan. He plays really well, has that track speed, is a great athlete, great ball skills as well on him, can play in the band and zone. I think he's a good scheme fit for uh, Dallas as well. And uh, I think it's just a great overall fit for a team that desperately needs help in their secondary. At 11, here's the next wide receiver off the board. It's Jamar Chase to LSU. I know you could say Jalen Waddle is a more electric player than Jamar Chase. That's that's fine, and I and I and I would agree with that. But Jamar Chase is just such a physical wide receiver, someone that can create separation by himself. Doesn't need to be schemed open, and that's exactly what the Giants need. They can't have Daniel Jones having to rely on guys like Evan Ingram, guys like Darius Slayton, guys like Sterling Shepard to get consistently open. They need a true number one receiver, and that's what Jamar Chase brings to the table in New York. And I think it's a great, great fit for this 
this team. Again, I think he's already solidified himself as a top pick. He would have been a top pick last year if he could have come out, uh, but obviously he was only a sophomore. Opting out this year isn't going to hurt him all that much like it might like a guy like Rousseau because he already has put up one of the best college football seasons ever at wide receiver. So uh, I'm really excited to see where Jamar Chase goes in this draft, and I think Big Blue is a perfect fit for him. At 12, just mentioned his name, Jalen Waddle. This is via that 49ers trade. Uh, Jalen Waddle uh, to the Big Apple as well. He's going to go to the New York Jets. Terrific player Waddle is. Has that track speed. Uh, an elite player. Uh, you know, an underrated route runner. Can, uh, you know, dazzle defenders. He's just super, super good. Super talented. And not, also not to mention a fantastic punt re returner. Uh, when people ask me for a comp about him, I throw out Tyree Kill because he isn't just a John Ross. He isn't just a Henry Ruggs. He's so much more than that. He's such a talented receiver as well. So I think that... Uh, in Matt, Mike, Mike LaFour, which one, I think Mike LaFour is the brother of Matt LaFour is the Packers head coach. In Mike LaFour's offense, you see guys like, uh, you know, Debo Samuel used, you see guys like um, Brandon Ayuk used last year. So they can use Jalen Waddell in similar ways where he can get running attempts. He can uh, catch those jet sweeps, those shuffle passes, be moved in motion all over the field. Uh, so I think that with the new coaching staff, it's a perfect fit uh, in New York for Jalen Waddell. At 13, Christian Darrisaw, the offensive tackle out of Virginia Tech. Chargers need to protect Justin Herbert. It's as, sim as simple as that. Uh, similar situation with the Bengals. Obviously, their offensive line isn't nearly as bad as the Bengals, but they need to tackle the future, and I think Christian Darrisaw is the best one remaining. They could also go interior offensive line. They could go wide receiver with Mike Williams being a free agent this year and Hunter Henry being a free agent this year. They need someone to pair alongside Keenan Allen, perhaps. However, I think that with the big three off the board, you just go with one of the better tackles remaining, and that's Christian Darrisaw. At 14, Minnesota goes Wyatt Davis. Uh, you know, Minnesota is a run-first team. They have Dalvin Cook. Uh, they love to run the football, and they need someone on that interior offensive lineman that can help open up run lanes. Wyatt Davis has the highest floor out of any interior offensive lineman in this class. Uh, I'd say Creed Humphrey is right behind him there, uh, and he has a high ceiling as well. There are some injury concerns, but he's a terrific player. I think he fits Minnesota's scheme. Like I said, they're a run-first team. Why not get an interior offensive lineman who can help open up the, those interior run lanes? Uh, and I think it's a perfect fit in Minnesota. At 15, this has been mocked by everyone. Kyle Pitts to the uh, to the New England Patriots, the tight end out of Florida. Kyle Pitts is one of my favorite players in this class. I think I have him as like my seventh overall talent in this class on my big board, which I'll drop if you guys want. Let me know if you want to see, uh, see my big board in the comments below. But Kyle Pitts is a terrific player. I've seen him consistently line up on the outside as if he was a wide receiver going against cornerbacks in college football and dominating them as, as again, as if he was a wide receiver. So I can't wait to see what he does versus linebackers in the NFL or safeties in the NFL. He's the definition of a mismatch. It's going to be perfect for Bill Belichick. You saw what he could do with Gronk. Uh, and I think they're uh, very similar players. Obviously, Kyle Pitts is definitely a worse blocker than Gronk, but uh, you know, just as good as a receiver. Uh, and it should be fun to watch him work in Philly. In, sorry, in New England scheme if he ends up there. At 16, Quiddy Pay to the Arizona Cardinals. Now, I actually have Quiddy Pay as my fourth rated edge, but. Uh, and, and it's mainly because I view him as a Jadavion Clowney type player. Uh, while Jadavion Clowney is a good player and, you know, a terrific run stopper and can make those tackles for loss, I think Quiddy Pay can do all of that as well. Uh, you know, in today's NFL, you're really looking for someone to, that can get to the quarterback. And out of the top four guys for me, Azizo Jolari, Gregory Rousseau, and uh, Joseph Osai, and obviously Quiddy Pay. I think Quiddy Pay is the worst guy at getting to the passer. So I have my concerns about him, but this isn't what I would do, Mock. This is what I think GMs are going to do. And they're obviously smarter than me. So if most people are saying Quiddy Pay is the highest rated edge right now, I'm obviously going to roll with that. So Arizona gets Quiddy Pay. They need uh, some edge help. Chandler Jones needs uh, you know, a counterpart over there. So it's a good fit. Uh, I'm interested to see what he does on his pro day, what he runs. Uh, he's obviously a terrific athlete, but uh, again, I, I could be way off about Quiddy Pay and that's why I'm not a GM and that's why I'm not an NFL scout. But uh, I think that it's most likely that out of all the edges, his name is the first called. At 17, just mentioned him. He has the highest pressure rating call out of any of these edges. He has the highest um, consistency. You know, he he's very good. Zizo Jolari out of Georgia gets to the quarterback, and that's what I was just mentioning. That's what I'm looking for in an edge. He's the best out of it out of any of the edge rushers in this class. 
I think it's a really, really good fit in uh, Gruden's defensive scheme, uh, and I think that Las Vegas needs uh, one of these edge rushers uh, desperately in this class to go alongside with Max Crosby because they were one of the worst teams in the NFL last year at getting to the quarterback. So Quellen Furl thing didn't work out in my opinion. They whiffed on that pick. That's going to, you know, he could have gone 17 overall, 18 overall, 19 overall, and I would have said that's good range for him at that point. But fourth overall was honestly way too high, especially with Josh Allen on the board, Brian Burns on the board, even Ed Oliver, if you wanted to get an interior uh, defensive lineman. So I think Aziz is a good player to, you know, come into Las Vegas and make a difference on that defensive line. At 18, Jeremiah Owosu Karamoa, the linebacker out of Notre Dame to Miami, traded away Raekwon last year. They need someone to pair alongside a stud that they have on the interior already in Jerome Baker. And Jeremiah Owosu can be that guy. He can play in the coverage role. He's a terrific athlete, hard hitter, uh, and I'm really excited to see where he lands. This is a great value pick. I think I have him rated in my top 15. So, uh, I, you know, just an absolute stud Jeremiah is. And Miami gets a great pickup here at 18. At 19, this is via that Washington football team trade. I have the Panthers getting Zayvon Collins. Zayvon Collins is a utility knife. You can really put him all over the field. He can play in coverage. He can play, you know, just run-stopping interior linebacker. He can even play off the edge. So it's going to be really interesting to see uh, whichever team gets him, how they're going to use him. You're going to need to know how to use him. It's kind of like Arizona with uh, Isaiah Simmons last year. I still think Isaiah Simmons is a top three player out of last year's class. I think he was just so, so, so disgustingly misused by Arizona's front or Arizona's coach staff that uh, it just really didn't show up on tape. So whoever gets Zayvon Collins is going to need to know where to put him, when to put him, uh, and and I think that Carolina could do a good job with him. They went all defensive last year. I think defense is still the team's biggest weakness, so they get Zayvon Collins here at 19. At 20, uh, after Christian Darisol, I think this tackle class is a little interesting because it's definitely got some first-round talents, but they're all going to go in the range of like 20 to 32, and they could really go in any order. There's guys like Mayfield, who I have going to the Bears here. There's guys like Leatherwood. There's guys like Eichenberg. There's... Uh, you know, uh, plethora Cosme is another one. So there's so many, so many tackles here uh, that could go from 20 to 32. It's going to be really interesting to see how that order falls out. Right now, I just have Mayfield as the next highest rated. That's just my personal opinion. And uh, the Bears' offensive line was horrible last year. Aside from the quarterback play, it was the worst thing on the team. So I think that they need to protect whoever's going to be throwing the ball in Chicago next year. At 21, while the Colts could go Mac Jones, I definitely could see this as a Mac Jones spot. I think that they go Sam Cosme. I think uh, Costanzo, if, if that's his name, uh, is retiring after the season, so they're going to need a replacement on an offensive line that regressed heavily this year. They weren't one of the worst offensive lines in football, but they certainly did not have the success that they've had over the past few years with guys like Quentin Nelson, Braden Smith, Ryan Kelly. So I think they uh, get their tackle replacement, try to you know get that line to the best offensive line in the league status uh, in Indianapolis so it should be interesting to see how that works out. But uh, Sam Cosme is a pick for the Colts here. At 22, mentions his name before, uh, Gregory Rousseau. I think Osai is the better player, but just for Tennessee's scheme, they need a pocket pusher, and that's exactly what Gr- Gregory Rousseau is. They already have Simmons. They already have Landry. They just need a you know a rotational interior defensive line that can also play on the edge, and I think Rousseau fits that uh, mold perfectly. Had 15 and a half sacks as a redshirt, so- or as a redshirt freshman, right? So uh, he, he came to play in his freshman year. We saw the talent that he possesses. It's a bummer that he opted out this year, and obviously he did it for the right reasons for himself so it's not a knock on him but I certainly think it's going to affect his draft stock with only one year of freshman play on film uh I think that it's going to be really really interesting to see how he plays out in this draft does he continue to fall could he even fall to the second round could a guy uh who would have been his teammate this year in Jalen Phillips you know come up and pass him will Osai be picked higher than him uh it de- I think it really depends on his pro day the lack of combine is going to hurt him but again for Tennessee scheme is a great pick I do believe in Gregory Rousseau I think he is a talented player He just needs to get his technique down, and uh, I think he'll continue to fall a bit uh, in this range of 22 to 32. So we'll see where he ends up going. But again, for Tennessee's scheme, it just makes the most sense. At 23, uh, this is via that Jamal Adams trade, uh, J.C. Horn to the New York Jets. And now I think J.C. Horn is a terrific athlete. I think he's, uh, you know, just a, a very, very solid player, but he is very scheme dependent, right? So I think it depends which team takes him uh, and, and how that's going to affect his uh, success level. I think it's the same with Sean Wade, who's going to be picked probably later second round now after his abysmal season, but that's because they try to play a nickel guy on the outside, right? So if, if you get a team that plays a lot of nickel, I think Sean Wade could go to a team like that. 
uh, JC Horn fits perfectly in Salah's team or scheme. Part of me, I think he's perfect for that defense. He plays a lot like uh, Ward did. He plays a lot like uh, Richard Sherman does. I think he's a really good player, and he just needs to be in the right home. And I think that New York is the perfect place for him. At 24, another tackle that I mentioned, uh, another team that is going to have a guy who's a free agent or might retire in Villanueva. So they just get another tackle to slide right in, and it's Alex Leatherwood. Has the highest floor in this class out of any tackle uh, besides Sewell, I would say. I think he's a plug-and-play player, can start right away. Has had four years of starting experience at Alabama. Terrific player. I was so happy to see him come back for his senior year just so he could prove how good he is, and he did it. So I think Leatherwood's a really, really strong tackle, a really good prospect in this class, and definitely worth the this late first round pick uh, that the Steelers are going to take him with here. At 25, Eric Stokes is another interesting corner. Uh, I really don't have a good feel on him, but with uh, most of the tackles off the board, I think that the Jacksonville Jaguars might look in the cornerback direction. They could certainly go safety here as well. Uh, they could go with Javon Holland, perhaps, maybe uh, Trevon Morig. I hope I said that right. I'm kind of blanking on the TCU guy's name. Uh, so that could certainly be a pick here, uh, but I think Eric Stokes could also fit that bolt, uh, mold. So uh, could could be interesting to see how that plays out. Jacksonville does need help in the secondary, though. C.J. Henderson isn't going to you know just be the only guy, and obviously they brought in Sidney Jones, who's a decent player as well, but they need a little more help, and Eric Stokes made sense to me. At 26, just mentioned his name, Joseph Osai. Uh, he's kind of that outside linebacker, uh, edge rusher type guy. I think you know, Cleveland, aside from getting linebackers in secondary, their main concern has to be getting a guy, a counterpart to play alongside Miles Garrett. I think their offense is in great shape. They, you know, revamped that offensive line, made it one of the best in the NFL. Wyatt Teller took a huge step. Conklin's obviously terrific. Jedrick Wills is terrific. So uh, I think this offensive line in Cleveland is really good. I think Baker Mayfield's good. I think Chubb and Kareem are good. I don't even think you need Odell in Cleveland to be successful. So I really want the Browns to focus on the defensive side of the ball in this uh, class. And why not focus on getting more pressure on the quarterback and get that con- counterpart that Miles Garrett needs and Joseph Osai, just a terrific athlete, kind of a hothead, but I really don't mind that. I like cocky players. Uh, and, you know, I think Cleveland has been known for bringing in some cocky players. Obviously, Andrew Barry is definitely going to operate in a different way than John Dorsey would. But at the same time, I think Joseph Osai is a good fit in Cleveland and will provide provide a spark for a defense that really needs to get better in order for the Browns to be a Super Bowl contender. At 27, I have players rated higher than Rashad Bateman at the wide receiver position. Right now, I have Kadarius Toney higher than him. I have Rondell Moore higher than him. I even have Rondell, or sorry, Elijah Moore higher than him, right? But when it comes down to it, those are guys that are going to beat you with speed. They're going to beat you on trick plays. They're going to beat you, uh, you know, over the middle. Uh, and they don't really have that big catch radius that you're looking for in a receiver. Rashad Bateman does. Lamar Jackson, as much as, you know, people talk about him being such a great player, you know, suck it up, Ravens fans. He's not the best passer. He's not the most accurate passer. And that's why guys like Marquise Brown aren't working out. That's why the Ravens offense came to a halt this year at, at, around that midway point. And that's why they only put up three points against the Buffalo Bills in the divisional round, right? They need a receiver that can get uh, his catch radius or have a large catch radius to catch those balls that Lamar Jackson's throwing at him to go, you know, behind himself to extend his arms out in front of him and get the football. I think that uh, Rashad Bateman is just the best scheme fit for the Ravens at this point. If they don't go wide receiver in the first round, I'm going to be disappointed. They need someone to help out Lamar Jackson. He's a terrific quarterback. Don't get me wrong, but he's not a terrific passer yet. So I think Rashad Bateman is just makes the most sense for Baltimore. At 28, I had to do it. I I love Jameis Winston. I really want the Saints to try him out. Uh, But at the same time, you're going to need a backup plan if uh, you have Jameis Winston. Taysom Hill is going to be interesting this offseason. I really don't know what they're going to do with him. Their cap situation is uh, pretty horrible right now. I think they're looking at like negative 100 mil in cap space going into the next season. Obviously, if Drew Brees retires, that's going to take some some weight off that. But uh, why not go Mac Jones, right? I think he has a lot to prove at the Senior Bowl. Trevor Lawrence isn't going to be there. Zach Wilson isn't going to be there. Trey Lance isn't going to be there. So you have Mac Jones, who's really the only quarterback out of the top five quarterbacks that's going to be at the Senior Bowl, that's going to be playing. I'm so excited to watch him work. Devontae Smith's going to be there, his former teammate. So Mac Jones at the Senior Bowl, man. I'm very excited. That's next week. It's going to be televised if you want to watch it on NFL Network. The practices are, I think, Tuesday and Wednesday. And then the Senior Bowl game is Thursday. All of it will be televised. So if you are a fan of Mac Jones and you want to see his stock rise, this is the place to do it. He has to show off that arm strength. 
strength. He has to show off that athleticism because those are the two biggest question marks right now that aren't really showing up on his tape, right? So Mac Jones needs to, you know, prove himself to solidify himself as a first round talent and as an NFL quarterback. And I'm really hoping he does so. And uh, why not have Sean Payton take a shot on a kid like Mac Jones here at 28? At 29, Christian Bar- Bar- Barmore, Barmore, uh, the interior defensive lineman out of Alabama, is someone that uh, I was considering, you know, putting late in the second round before the before the college football postseason. However, he played really well in the playoffs and really uh, became that player that everyone was expecting him to do uh, or expecting to be at the start of the season. He was expected to be a early first round talent, maybe a, even a mid first round talent, and then he kind of fell off. He didn't have a great season, didn't put up good numbers, but he played really, really well in the playoffs and showed flashes of what. He he can be. So I think he will end up getting picked here in the early or late first, early second round range, uh, anywhere from like, I would say 25 to 40. I think we would hear Barrymore, Barrymore's name being called. So terrific player. I think he has, uh, you know, all the potential in the world. He just needs to go to a defense that can, uh, you know, grow players and develop players. And I think you've seen that in Tampa Bay. Guys like Carlton Davis are playing at an all-pro level. Guys like Vita Vea are terrific now. You have guys like Shaq Barrett who came to Tampa Bay uh, after not really having an outstanding career and then turning it on and becoming one of the best edge defenders in the NFL, right? So I think they're really good at developing talent over there in Tampa. I think Barrymore is a perfect, or Tampa is a perfect landing spot for Barrymore, a guy that can pair in the interior alongside Vita Vea. So uh, I think it's an overall great pick here for the Bucks at 29. At 30, uh, with some of the best corners being off the board, I'm not going to take Sean Wade to the Bills, and you know they could go tight end. I was thinking Friar Muth, but I, I'm actually a fan of Dox and Knox, and I think he fits for what the Bills are trying to do. You could even go wide receiver with Cole Beasley and John Brown getting up there in age, uh, but I went with Jalen Phillips, the edge out of Miami. Something about him excites me. Uh, you know, I'm I'm a fan of Miami. I watched them a bunch, and uh, Jalen Phillips was all over the field, consistently getting to the quarterback, consistently in the backfield. He's a hothead. He's another hothead, but again, uh, that's something that doesn't really concern me. I kind of like guys with fire under their bellies and guys that are going to be cocky uh, as long as they back it up on the field, and Jalen Phillips certainly did that this year. He's going to be another guy that falls in this range of 25 to like 45. Uh, He could go anywhere, and I'm sure uh, his interviews are definitely going to help or hurt his draft stock, depending on which team uh, wants what. So, Jalen Phillips, good player and, uh, you know, someone that can help out the Bills who need some youth on their defensive line. They have Jerry Hughes. uh, I'm blanking on their other names, but there's some older guys on that defensive line in Buffalo as well. So I feel like Ed Oliver is really the only young piece they have. They need to look to the future and Jalen Phillips can be that guy. At 31, I have the Green Bay Packers going Kadarius. Tony mentioned his name. He's actually my wide receiver four with Olave opting out. Uh, or Sorry, not opting out, but uh, going back to college. Uh, Kadarius Tony is just a utility knife. He can do everything. Uh, he can line up in the slot. He can burn guys on the outside. Uh, he can be utilized in the run game. I think Green Bay needs someone like that. Uh, they need someone to distract the defense away from Devontae Adams, although Devontae Adams is terrific, and he's proven to be terrific in even double coverage as well. I think that uh, Kadarius Tony could certainly uh, help the Packers offense and they finally go uh, a wide receiver for Aaron Rodgers after disrespecting him for the past four years he's proven that he's the MVP he's proven that he can still play with the best of them and uh, now they get him a little help in Kadarius Tony. now wrapping up the first round and the mock draft I have Rondell Moore going to the Chiefs he fits the Chiefs right and uh you know, the Chiefs are going to continuously go offense. I don't see them going any other direction than offense, especially in the first rounds uh, with Patrick Mahomes. You're just always going to want to be building around Patrick Mahomes. So with Rondell Moore still sitting on the board, Miko Hardman really hasn't taken that next step. I think Rondell Moore could be the best, uh, one of the best wide receivers in this class, one of the best players in this class if he stays healthy. He had probably one of the best freshman seasons of all time at Purdue, and then got hurt his sophomore year, and then uh, obviously opted out, opted back in, and then got hurt once more. At Purdue this year. So I was kind of hoping he stayed around for a senior season, but again, you don't want to risk any more injury that he's already had. So if he can stay healthy, Ron Elmore is going to be so good and pairing it with Patrick Mahomes would be so unfair. So it's a really great pick for the Chiefs. They could go offensive line here, but again, they've kind of patched up their offensive line and made it work. If Mitchell Schwartz retires, because uh, there's been some rumors about that, they could certainly go in the offensive tackle direction, but uh, it should be fun to see how it plays out. But for right now, I'm going to give them Ron Elmore. All right, guys, it's going to do it for today's mock draft. Again, I'll be posting more frequently. And again, look out tomorrow for the Matt Miller interview. It will be posted on YouTube tomorrow, probably around 5 o'clock. I think I'm shooting it tomorrow as well. So if not tonight, tomorrow, and then it will be up tomorrow. So again, look out for that. I want to post that here. Hopefully get some views. Uh, But anyway, guys, take it easy. Peace.